Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Both Sides with the DJ and Honey Podcast. I'm DJ. And I'm Honey. What's going on, baby? Why are you looking at me like that? Make the point of what is he got? Let me say my name. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I understand. I'll be taking it from you. You ain't be taking it. I'm like... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Both Sides with DJ. And Honey. Podcast. Okay. This is 23 Like Jordan. Another episode with you guys. Yes. Um, just started off. You know, rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. N- Nipsey yes. Hussle. Yes. Um, tragic what happened Crazy. to him last weekend. Um, we've been paying close attention, and I'll honestly say that I, I, I'm not saying that I wasn't a fan. I didn't listen to Nipsey Hussle's music until this week. Honestly, just to get a you know, a background feel of the appreciation that everybody in love that everyone is showing mm-hmm. him. So, you know, rest in peace to Nipsey. I know that he touched a lot of people, did a lot of positivity. Man was only 33 years old, lost his life. Yeah, you know. he um, leaves back a son and a daughter. He has one one son with um, Laura London. Mm-hmm. So, and it's, I just don't get it. How could you be, how could you be filled with so much hate to just want, I mean, not saying it was right, but my thing is to have, if you have to take that many support, you could have just shot him in the foot, anything else but that, but to literally, like, to shoot him in places, like, that's just That's how the hate is in the world, that's stuff. just what it is. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of um, things that he's been doing mm-hmm. very well. Um, he's doing things for his community. He was actually going to an LAPD rally, um, I think that week or that day or something like that. Um, you know, he was doing the documentary um, for Dr. CB. He was, uh, he was, um, he was really Yeah, he was involved. doing, yeah, he, he was, was very, very involved. involved. So, you know, you hate to see somebody that touch so much people go down, especially somebody that's, you know, a celebrity or, right, you know, that, that goes and influence a bunch of people, right. that probably, especially on the West Coast. So rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. Um, he's starting off a show like that. Well, let's it's hard. Yeah, it's hard yeah, to it's hard. Um, but So let's... if you saw another girl come up to me and do the Amari Hardwick to me, like Beyonce, that done the way Amari Hardwick kissed, like hugged and like, Kind of got close to the mouth. How would you react? Because I know we've had a discussion about it already off the air. What I saw, and see, what you saw, you said it's all right. So now I put myself in those shoes. On I knew he was gonna do that. that. That's why well, I knew he was gonna do it's that. Okay. Let's just put it out there. He is not Omar Hara, and I am not Beyonce. So on that it don't matter. Though, but I mean, my thing, thing about this, man. it's a slight. I don't think it was intentional. My, I had a question about the second kiss, but the way that it looked like it's in the video. Kiss. It is a kiss. You kiss. It is a kiss. The, but she sort of like flared back a little bit. So that's where it's like, cause, I mean, there are times when I know people have kissed each other and almost hit each other. And now, whether or not it's intentional, I don't think it was intentional at all. I think some of it's being taken out of proportion because it's Beyonce and, you know, the other incident with the, um, Jay-Z and his lies. And so now it's like, okay. If, if, if you would have saw somebody doing that to me, you would have came up behind them and put them in the headlock. And no, I would not. Yes, you would have. I would have yes. looked at you and looked at I'm like, uh, okay. Oh, all right. Okay. And then what? But if you guys knew each other, and I know like it's not but like that. That's his first his time meeting. His wife was there. That's his first time meeting. Okay, but his wife was there. He got a little ahead of himself. Maybe just a little too close. That was. Close. I thought guys allowed to kiss Beyonce. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You don't think it's a little too close? If some, 
I, I see, think not, no, I am. I am being biased. Yeah, you it are. was a little bit, but I'm not gonna say I want to jump on a person. I like I said before. Would you I was with that like, you and her, and then somebody would explain if I felt the, if I felt the need. If I don't feel like it's a need like that, because of it's, what would make you feel this need? Like I don't get that. It depends on the situation. What's the situation? If it's more than what you see. So like if you're not wait, if, so wait, 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 wait. If it's I'm, something I'm, you're confusing me. No. It's, it's the same exact situation and some First of all, they were at an award show. Let's okay. just put it out there. Right. If we're at an award show, okay, if we're gonna use you as that Okay, if you want to, I don't know what situation we'll put it in because, like I said, it depends on the situation. Just doing it because all right, so what I'm you saying, what that. I'm saying is, I would, like I said, I would have just looked at both of you and then if I felt something, I would look at. Otherwise, I didn't know. I wouldn't if it, if I saw it was it intentional. Do you feel it was intentional? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it was necessarily intentional. All I'm saying is. If somebody did that to me, you would have came. So that's the whole hoopla because they said somebody. No, so the saying, whole point is not, it wasn't intentional. Was totally it wasn't. Old, because it was Beyonce. And it's just like, oh, it wasn't that close. So I nobody don't think could, it was intentional. Nobody kiss Beyonce. I guess not that close. But um, okay, in any average, yeah, on the yeah. real, do you think, it, if, if you looked at it like that, if the same was like me, like you said, do you think it would have been intentional? Do you think that was intentional? If it is one chance, it's Beyonce. It might have been. I don't know. See, that's oh, what so people, like that's, any that's other fan trying to be, but that's he got more play. power because he's Hollywood. It says and now like the bit, bit who? Bit Beyonce. Yeah, so okay, so she, like, what, she got chance. close. She got extra close. She's like, that's my one chance. I'm gonna bite her. <laughs> she <laughs> with the imprint, an instant tattoo. <laughs> used to it. Um, I don't know. I just it's biased because I feel like it wasn't intentional because that would be disrespect to his wife who was also with him and Jay Z. Jay Z, I would have been. Okay, so why didn't Jay Z say something? It was an award show. Like I said, There's why didn't Jay Okay, There's but Jay Z said online. But Jay Z has said something before. Jay-Z what made the difference? Like, See the situation. Did Jay Z like say that. something yet anyway? Did he say I don't think there's been any drama or anything from okay. it, but the internet makes other things. That's it, exactly. About, See? That's not the reality. About Jay-Z. That's I'm talking about us. I'm not so I'm oh, talking so now about we're on the us? No, okay, we're we'll flipping no no. Someday this podcast is gonna be on award shows and people are gonna probably talk about Okay, and like I said, depending show. on the situation, I'm not one of those crazy chicks out in the street. Uh uh-uh, I'm not gonna yeah, say so oh you catch yourself. Like I said, you you <laughs> already know. Like I said You about to be lit. Like I said, we I saw, said I would just look at you and look at the other person. And then if I felt the need, oh somebody would have to explain. Oh Point blank. Like, oh oh mm-hmm. We saw us. See how you just put that saw off. Us. Mm-hmm. We saw us. And this was this is Ronnie's <laughs> red side. <laughs> <laughs> and that is totally Daniel's who's <laughs> the <laughs> 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 uh, We saw us. Yeah, we did. Um thank God on five dollar Tuesday. Not to take anything away from the movie, but you know, it wasn't to me anything to rush and go to the theater. Um, I like the concept of the movie. Thought it was a dope concept. I like the the, the the meaning behind the movie. What was um, the symbols and signs everybody talked about? You know, it wasn't. I don't think anything big to dissect to me. Um, but I like that concept. I think one of the things about it, I'm glad I didn't read that subliminal messages in it to understand the movie. From the credits, I'm glad that we caught it. We discussed it like when we had when we finished seeing it. It was like, Oh, did you notice this and that in order to understand the plot of it or mm-hmm. more like the flip side? Right. There is a twist to this, supposedly. I don't know, it's is it like a scary movie? I wouldn't say I don't consider it really that scary. I consider it like a mind opener. Like, if you yeah, have it's like, like a suspense, a suspense type, type, you know, suspense. Little thriller. Yeah. I, don't yeah. know. I don't know. Um, the reason I probably came off a little flat about how the movie was. I felt like, I guess I went in to the movie with the expectations that um, Lapita and Winston was gonna kill this movie. And I guess, I don't know, maybe the thriller thing may not be the best role for them. That, that's just my opinion. I still think the movie overall, I, I gave it a, maybe a, something close to a seven, I think. I say eight. I, I say that eight? seven and a half eight. I say that because this. I don't think I ever seen a scary, a, a horror, suspense movie. I'm so used to being in one of those doc, one of those suspenseful drama movies in the sense of like you know, uh, Twelve Years Safe and so forth. To see her in this and to see 
which this as he said this, there's a mirror image of every person in there that uh, the family i'm not movie. but no what i'm saying is to see her react herself in some of the form is like kind of weird i don't think it was her best role but if it was her first role in this type of success i think she did okay i feel like the um red character when she was playing the yeah that's what I was she did about. really good with that i i feel winston um duke's character um made me believe in somewhat that it was kind of an illusion all along you know what i'm saying like it, it wasn't like i don't know and i really like winston duke and i and black panther and i like lapita black panther i just feel like in my opinion that the acting was subpar um now the young lady Saadi, right joseph right i'm saying that correctly she did her thing she really did her thing. And this was um, her first? Uh, it said introducing okay. her, but um, she really did her thing. And I feel like that's what makes me really excited. I might have been rough about it. I might have told somebody 6.7, 6.8, one of my friends. I'm going to give it, because it's something that I want to watch again. Um, I probably won't go to the movie to spend my money, probably watch it when it comes out. But I want to watch it again because I feel like those type of movies make you think and it makes you still appreciate the movie a little bit more after it dies down from the hype and all of that stuff. You start to read more into it. Movies like that. I really like movies like that because it makes those type of movies timeless. You can watch it over and over and over again and find something new every time. So that's why I don't want to say it was a bad movie. Like to me, it was good. Maybe there were some things that passed me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go see it again. I want to see it again. Because I believe that the movie was good and there were some things that maybe could have been better. But I still think it, was, it has potential to be a good, great movie. I think this, not saying, despite that, not was, saying uh, it falls in the terms of these movies, but I would say for you to understand or have a mindset of it, you would have, it would be something like um, Get Out or what's the Inception, like stuff like that in the sense of. Like the mindset you have to right. have yeah, 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 to yeah, understand yeah. it, because um, there's a lot of things like, have, right. like he said, in order to see it, you, it would take another probably two or three, because then you always find something really yeah. like, oh, I, I didn't really notice that, like, yeah. and then it starts to make sense. Certain things make sense. I honestly thought about the movie the whole way home after we saw it. I, about I thought about it all the, throughout the day yeah. at work, um, but that's why I, I like those kind of movies. Um, we have a special guest before I get into the next topic. Today we have a special guest today. Uh, we've been on a roll. Um, <laughs> today we got um, G and Cole Apparel Man himself, yes. Will Dennis, my good yes. friend. He will be here with us later in the show. Just want to throw that out there. He's going to be here um, talking G and Cole Apparel, uh, talking his philanthropy, talking all that good stuff. Will's a cool dude. Mm -hmm. uh, I might even talk some sports with him. So um, you got to make sure you stick around for that. And um, speaking of sports, um, the Elite Eight. It's passed. Yes, We're on to the final four Dude, this weekend. The Zion hype is over. And Dude. especially some of those people who actually did the, the, the pools. Yeah, it's over he for a lot over. of I talked to my, my guy, Jim. He told me that about five or six people are still in it that had, that didn't have Jim. <laughs> and they must have um, different pools. So Virginia, a lot of people picked Virginia. Lot of people pick Virginia. Oh. Um, yeah, so, because they were one seed too, so you could have went that route. Okay. Depending on that bracket, um, or the side of the bracket. Right. But um, yeah, the Zion hype. You feel like it's been the hypest. What is the hypest time you remember in college basketball before Zion? Do you remember anything hyper than Zion? I'm thinking for me at my era, because I don't remember the Fab Five. I'm going to be honest. I don't remember the Fab Five. I remember the hearing of the Fab Five. I didn't watch it. Like, I watched replays and I was like, I don't remember the Fab Five. Um, I wasn't born with Jordan, was in college. Um, I wasn't watching car, um, college ball until like maybe my last years of high school until maybe now. So I guess my hype is here for me. Might have been the Carmelo Anthony year with Dwayne Wade and them, maybe. I would say, I would say Zion. Zion was a one man show this whole Iverson, year. Even though Allen Iverson, nah, not in college. Allen, nah, college. he wasn't all that. Not in I college. really don't know. No, I can't think of anybody. Zion has been a one man show. He has ran 
the sports center to the ground with his name. They even showed him this week still playing basketball. No matter what, he 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 played to the fullest. He kept it going. And yeah, he played great. Despite anything, everybody played great. It's just you know that's where they put the trouble sometimes. You know, yeah, this is what it is. Um, so it is the final four this weekend. Yes. Um, shout out to everybody who is still in it. Obviously, I I, I got um, Virginia still in it. I don't got them winning the tournament, but I did have them in the final four, so I'm still in it. You not you done? So. I had Texas Tech for a while though. You did. I, I, I did. I think that was the sleeper team. Had, them in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sleeper team. But you're done, son. Just yeah, that's all right. Um, Next time. Michigan versus Texas Tech. Uh-huh. Um, Virginia versus Auburn. Um, that's the final four this weekend. Who you got? Who's winning it all Monday? Pick it now. Virginia. We got Virginia winning it all. Hmm. I'm gonna go Michigan. Michigan. Possibly. They just beat Duke. They just beat what they Doesn't make it. it. Every, uh, whoever, I think whoever wins is Michigan be versus. Yeah, what and everybody's hunger is different, so. Whoever wins is Michigan versus Texas Tech is gonna win. And they both on tomorrow. Today? Tomorrow, yeah, yeah. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> I'm used to the games coming on Thursday and Friday. Friday and stuff. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Sun- well, yeah, now it's that sound. Yeah. So once that's done, the NBA playoffs start the next weekend. Oh, thank Can't you. wait. Can't wait. That's basketball every day. And then there will be a part where everybody just has phones and watch your sports. Why? Because you don't watch baseball? We went to a couple of games. You already know. I right know, now. but Probably you already see what's going on the Yankees. Games. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of people on the injured list. We can't fall um, behind too much. That's the thing with us. I mean, it's so early. Yeah, though. we missed what, six, seven games. I get excited with the Yankees. Games. I can honestly say I do. I don't know. I like going to the game. Yeah. I like it. But um, <laughs> like I said before earlier, guys, we do have a guest. We'll be on next, right? Will, right. we got Will next. We'll yeah. be coming to join the studio. He's coming in the studio. That's right. We got That's a like studio guest. Like yeah, we got a studio guest coming in. Um, Will Dennis. Um, he'll be joining us, chatting it up with us and stuff. Um, see what he got to talk about. I know Will is um, a big, big time um, basketball guy, so I'm definitely going to ask him some basketball stuff. I might ask him some football stuff. I remember I, last week and I wanted to talk more sports, but I might ask him the stuff that I have. Um, so Will Dennis will be on next. Thank you guys again for listening to Both Sides with DJ Honey podcast. Yep. We'll be back. BMCC, okay. the outside um, park, played out there. Then we there's a park across the street from the, um, the West Side Highway by Wall Street. There's another like like two parks with battery. That's not, yeah. not battery, but it's a long battery on the West Side. With the tennis courts? Yeah. Okay. There's tennis tennis yeah, courts. Yeah, there's like a little field and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, over there. Both a couple of times, and each time, so the bottom of my feet was killing. Yeah, me. man. I was like, I was like, like the shows, Yo, hey. <laughs> we get older, right? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Both Sides with DJ and Honey Podcast. Now, we have a guest in the building, an actual guest in the building. Um, it's been a minute. We got my boy, philanthropist, poet, um, gentleman, and co apparel, man himself, Will Dennis. I thought he was going to come here like, 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 Dress up and like, like have me like looking, but nah. I really, really like appreciate you coming through. Thanks for coming through the Both Sides podcast with DJ Honey. What's going on, bro? Uh, How's thank, everything? Thank, thank you for having me, man. Everything's been all right, man. Just trying to trying to build my nine to five and build my five to nine, so I can leave my nine to five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So, so thank you for having me. Oh, uh, no problem. Conversation. Let everybody know. Let everybody see first and foremost, Grand Cold Power. Before you give that up, that's right there in the front. That is all well. And I'm pretty sure you got some partners in there. You want to shout them out real quick before we dive into you? Yeah, shout out to, you know, one of our biggest things is working with different black-owned businesses. So shout out to all the black-owned businesses that have supported us in the past. Scotch Porter, Urban Eden, uh, uh, Perfect Blue Alchemy. Uh, we appreciate y'all for the partnership and, and the cross-collaboration of audiences and hope we can build in the future. That's dope, bro. So first, what got you from Will the Poet to Will selling you got the apparel going you got the you know the women's stuff going now philanthropists you're doing a lot of community work how did that growth start um 
So I stumbled upon Gene Call Apparel by accident. Um, so I, I didn't start the company. Okay. And what it was was um, I went to a game night in Jersey, and I saw at the time the box was bigger, but I saw the box with the accessories um, as one of the auction items. Okay. So I asked my boy, I'm like, "Hey, yo, this is dope. What is this?" He was like, "Yeah, this is this." At the time, it was called Gentleman and Company. So yeah, Gentleman and Company. My boy Terrence out in um, Cincinnati, Ohio, does this company. Man, he's looking for brand ambassadors. So I was like, okay, at the time I was working on Wall Street. Yeah. So I said, okay, you know, I wear suits. It seems like very affordable. Why not? You know, I'm tired of paying six dollars for a tie and mm-hmm. there's that notion that price and quality are the same thing and they're not. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, I hit him up in Groupie, <laughs> Groupie DM, and uh, he said, Yeah man, I'm looking for brand ambassadors and uh, let me get your address, you know. And I was I paid for a subscription every month and I was promoting it. Yeah. And being that he's in Cincinnati, I'm in New York, you know, have a greater market. So people started to inquire, like, what, what is this company? Like, can you tell me more? And um, in, in my curiosity, I started, I started to ask him more questions about the company and how he started and, and uh, giving him tips on how he can make it better and mm-hmm. things of that nature. And then December 2016, he texted me and was like, hey, you know, um, I need help with this, man. Do you want to come on as a partner? So I said, sure. Yeah. And we've done the ride ever since. That's right? dope. That's dope. And uh, one thing I appreciate about this company is uh, it aligns with my vision. So three pillars of Jean Carl Apparel are fashion, community, and collaboration. Mm-hmm. So with fashion, again, we, we don't want to pay 64 tie, thirty out for a pocket square if you're already paying 300 for so You guys are looking out for the pockets. Right. right. You know, so we're looking out for the pockets and we're trying to deviate the notion that Price and quality aren't the same. Okay. Um, there's some tie there's some tie designs that we mimic off of Famous tie companies, same, same, same material, same all that, and we charge twenty, and they charge seventy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and we want to promote being fashion forward, not only from a uh, men's accessories, but also from unisex apparel. The goal being to dispel the negative images of people of color. So things like this, dapper by nature. Mm-hmm. You know, so this is something for if, if 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 you don't want to, you know, wear a suit on a weekend, you can still promote you. You're a dapper. Um, you can still promote the brand in other ways. Yeah. With collaboration, you know, every other month we try to partner with different black-owned businesses to cross-cultivate, and um, with the notion that black-owned businesses don't need funding, they just need support. So you guys, you know, go about particular businesses, or that that you, like you guys incorporate with your brand, or is it just like any black-owned business? So that's my that's one of my jobs as COO is to seek out some of these black-owned businesses, reach out to them, and try and try to get a conversation going. So it's, you know, if we see a brand or someone recognizes a brand that may fit in our box, I'll reach out to them and say, hey, here's what we're about. Can you send us a drop sheet? We try to negotiate on price. We send out a, a contract and then um, you see it in our box and we try to, they try to promote just as much as we do to, to try to get more subscribers on our end and more customers on their end. So like in November, we were, our biggest uh, partnership was with Scotch Porter. Mm. Uh, Scotch Porter is a, a men's grooming and, and wellness mm-hmm. company and, um, the, the person we was connected with, Alicia, she worked with like Jay-Z and she worked for Rock Nation. Right, right. So like I sent a, a, a message to their customer service line, like, hey, you know, we're a subscription box, we're always looking for partnerships, we love to partner with Scott People Porter. are scared to send messages exactly. some of the days. Exactly, like, so, so, yeah. so I'm thinking, all right, they're not gonna respond, but then Alicia responded via email, like, hey, our customer support uh, sent us this note, and we, we had this partnership, so like November 20, this past November, for Movember, we did a partnership with Scotch Porter, which was pretty cool. Um, other companies we worked with, Urban Eden, it's a, a soap company out in Atlanta, Georgia. We do uh, all natural soaps, uh, hand cut, handmade, no two soaps look alike. Um, and then, you know, I became a subscriber of them, so I get soaps from them every month because, like, I believe in the quality of the, the items we put in our box. Um, the, this month, for Women's History Month, our theme was wine. Mm-hmm. Um, and we also wanted to work with a woman-owned business, so we have a beard oil from a woman-owned, black-owned business as well down in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. So we try, we try to find different businesses, different ways to, to promote other businesses and hopefully they can do the same for us. Cool. You gave, actually before you got here, a shirt for Rahani, um, if you could show them there. I know you just mentioned the Women's History Month. I'm rooting for everyone, everybody black. Let's go. I like the fact that you guys really incorporate like messages and our black people and a lot of your clothes. I wrote down a couple that I, I like. Did the Love Africa, um, the the Bay, the Black Love Energy. Bay, yeah. I thought that was the dopest because you got the, the beard dude and it's just like yeah, cool. that's it's really like, hot. And I wrote down that shirt as well. But it's, I like how you guys are incorporating that and it's making it like 
not making it, but it's it's good that you guys have these messages and it's like, okay, I can be a black owner as well. Like I can have black business because it's empowering messages just on clothing in general. So yeah. just the, like what you said, the dapper by nature, like just looking at that, you know what dapper is. Everybody who looks at know what dapper is and know that you can wear a hoodie that says dapper, but we know that you got the bow tie game on lock. So things like that, like, yeah. you know, you can dress up. I like the, the versatility of, of the brand in general, so. And the hardest part with creating apparel is trying to have powerful mes messaging without being cliche. Mm. Like that was the first like cliche thing we dropped. Like the day after Easter Ray said it, they're like, put on a shirt. Right. And, like and it sold tons. But we don't want to do that for every single person that said a famous quote. We still want to hold true to our to who we are. Yeah. So we, that's the hard part, trying to find different ways to still have a adult product without Oh, they, they heard that off the social media. What's the process behind that? Like, is uh, it just you just watching or listening or just it, it, it's, or it's, even it's, just thinking about anything positive in general? It's a team. Okay. It's a team. So at, it's myself and Terrence. Terrence is the CEO and founder. Okay. And then we have uh, one of my best friends, Naeem. He's our chief marketing officer. And then we have a bunch of brand ambassadors that have all different um, trends that mm -hmm. help to make this thing you know possible. So it's it, it, and we also have a really dope artist Ayana. So Ayana and Naeem are the, the, are the artists that help put these shirts okay. in production. So it's 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 it used to be I would both of us, me and Terrence, would have some hands on view at what's going on. But we trust the artistic vision of Naeem and Ayana to the point where we asked about it. They kept saying, "Hey, we're dropping new designs," and we didn't even inquire about it. And then they dropped this. And I'm just like. Okay. Mm -hmm. gotcha. All right, yeah, yeah. Um, hands off the way. I'll, I'll focus on. I'll focus on this, man. So, yeah. <laughs> Everybody got picked their lane. So yeah. your boxes are like uniquely done per month. Like, how does that work? Like, when you guys collaborate, do you guys? I know you can't get all of the products that you right. guys have. Sampled. Right. So, so how it works is for twenty eight dollars a month, we self curate a box of anywhere between four and six accessories and lifestyle items. So it could be anywhere from a tie, a pocket square, a lapel pin, a tie bar. This month for March, you know, our box was wine. $28 so a month. $28. That's, that's so uh, this month for March, we had wine. Uh, it, was, it was dedicated to wine. So we had a, 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 a tan pocket square to, to, to represent white wine. And we had like a burgundy tie to represent red wine. Right, right, right. And we also had a, a tie, a tie, a, a, a wine opener and a wine stopper. Nice. You know, so yeah. things that, you know, you may not think you need, but if, if you're here and someone brings wine, you're like, oh, stop, I remember that. I had a, yeah, you know what I mean? And, and, and now you have something to even close the wine so it doesn't like over ferment. You okay. Know, you still use it. So the process is literally we, we decide on a color scheme first. It's like, okay, um, I, we did blue last month, but what do you want to do this month? Like, what's, what, what color's in season? And then we try to choose, okay, do we want to do a tie and a square? Do we want to do a tie and a square, a lapel pin tie bar? Do we want to do cuff links? Do we want to do socks? And we try to pick and choose based on different patterns and color schemes to make the box visually appealing. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, you know, this, so, oh, yeah. so this is, uh, this box is our February box. Okay. And February box commemorates Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And each item in the box uh, represented um, a black pioneer. So the tie and square represents Dapper Dan. Okay. Right? Um, the cufflinks, the cufflinks are camera lens. Oh, nice. To, rep to, to represent Gordon Parks. Uh, I was running late, but I couldn't find it. But they, we also had an Ace of Spades bottle opener oh, okay. to represent Jay-Z. Right. And also a, a ballpoint pen tie bar for um, Maya Angelou and Max Hughes. That's dope. So, That's dope. But yeah, we also do things like socks. Uh, and we, we try to find things that people can use. Like we, we had this partnership with this company called SquareGuard. And the purpose of SquareGuard is, you know, not many people have time to fold their pockets with, mm -hmm. right? So SquareGuard, you just loop it in, weave it in, put the whole thing in your, in your pocket, and it still looks nice and neat. She was just neat. talking about like how <laughs> difficult it is to exactly. pocket and, so. and it's funny, this morning, um, uh, my girlfriend was trying to put my pocket square in and she was trying to fold it and I just told her, I just showed her and I just like stuff it in. Mm -hmm. But like, these help, you know, sometimes it's those nuances that you don't even see right. that, that make a difference. Right, right, right. Similar to, um, I'm sure you've seen the ads on Instagram of like those suspenders that you wear that connect to your socks so that you yeah. can keep your shirts up in. Like that's, 
those are those key things that that can s tell everything about your look and your personality. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so I take this <laughs> from you. so there's a lot of voices going on when you guys collaborate and figure it out. Who? Not nah, just say who. Like when it comes to like picking out things, especially with your accessories. And the coolest part, now you got the apparel going on. How do you collaborate both? Because you guys got the women's going on, the men's apparel going on, and now, well, basically oh, this. Always, how do you guys keep it all in one where it's like in sync with one another? You know, to get the, the audience say, your know, consumers to go, like, I want this, and once I see this, I can go to this set. Uh, group chats, conference calls, and marketing. Really, like me, Naeem, and Terrence, so we have a call every two weeks to discuss what's going on, okay. what we're going to do. Um, all right, how the March box do? Okay, April, that, that's already in production. All right, how are we gonna market that? How are we gonna do for May? Like we always think of like months ahead. Mm -hmm. So right now the April box is about to come out. We already think what we're gonna do for May and June. Right, right. Um, and how we're gonna market it. You know, we, one of our, one of our brand, newest brand ambassadors, his name is Jamar. He's a, a digital marketing wizard. Um, like he can, he, he has a gift mm -hmm. and he's helped us try to figure out how to utilize social media as a way to get hits to the website oh, and possibly customers, man. Like it's, I, I, I'm a techie, I'm into all this, but when he was trying to explain it to me, it sounded like German, man. Right. I was just like. I always try to ask all guests, like, <laughs> seeing how important social, social media is so important with promoting brands nowadays. Right. Like right. it's not like back in the days, you should have a, a website, you go to the website and click no, you gotta get your stuff on social media, Instagram. I'm not a big guy on Twitter, but like Facebook, those things like that. So people know, that's the way people know things. Like right. What's in your hand. Right. And, and Jamar has taught us how to make sure the look and feel of each photo we post or, or, or the overall look. So if you go to our page and just scroll without even looking at that photo, just the overall look and feel mm -hmm. to make sure that it's a clean, it's, it's clean to represent our, our brand, our image. And it's, it's more so it's branding. Like we use our personal social medias as, as branding. So we should do that for our actual brand, right? You know, and I know when, when we started, uh, me and Terrence was using our personal social media to promote the brand. Like I, I would post the box or I would post, but now uh, thanks to Jamar, we kind of understand a little bit more how to utilize the actual brand Instagram to promote and get sales and mm -hmm. views. And um, I'm learning, learning. I'm sure oh, we'll show you I'll get it. But... Stuff. It's a little. <laughs> I'm still trying to catch it. Yeah, still trying to catch it. Do you guys go out and like you know like you, um, do you go out and like promote the brand like like people have seminars and people have sessions where they can come and ask you certain particular questions like how to how to do particular things like does it go with certain colors or styles do you gotta like give personal advice as far as like choosing and picking like what form of color you use like your lapel and all the other stuff that goes in. So, so we do a lot of pop-up shops. Okay. So it'll be someone reaching out and saying, hey, I'm having an event, I'm looking for a vendor. So we come out, they have a table for us, we set up our accessories, and what we do, and it's actually been pretty popular, at the event, we'll tell folks, yes, we have a subscription box for $28, but we have a bundle pack where you can curate your own look. You can choose a tie, a square, a lapel pin, and a tie bar no. for 30 I always so, so, that. so now they're like, Shoot, so can y'all help me pick out something that looks nice? So we'll say, all right, so choose, choose a, a tie first. And like, all right, cool, I'm, I'm gonna choose this tie. And then, okay, uh, since I know my brand, I'm like, all right, here's three pop squares I think goes well with it. Then they go, okay, I want that pop square. I say, okay, here's lapel pin that goes with it. Right. So it's like, the fun, it, it makes it fun when I see them picking and choosing and saying, okay, I like this one, actually, no, I actually like this one. The so that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in regards to like outreach, you know, I, I run a mentoring program here in New York um, with the 100 Black Men of New York. And it's a seven-week program teaching kids how to prepare themselves to be intellectual leaders mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, teach them how to create business plans. And um, I try to utilize my personal brand and this brand as a way to motivate them. So I'll come dressed to the nines and mm -hmm. I'll do things like, if you guys have dope socks, I'll give you guys a prize or something like that. Do you, you think things like them? that is important for mental health and development in children? I feel like when you're not involved with kids and teaching them those type of things, they grow up and they just, you know, don't get certain things. So I feel like what you guys are doing, because I've seen some of the pics and stuff that you're doing with the kids, is helping develop those kids for their future. Basically, yeah. like, it's not always about I can tie a tie, because a lot of people think, like, you know, men's mentor program, you're just teaching kids how to tie a tie is more than just that. It's 
being that individual that might be the only person there for them to mm-hmm. teach anything. You know what I'm saying? It's not just teaching them ties, it's responsibility, for prep, you know, those things. I like where you guys are going with that. Yeah, man, and, and you know my background, man. Yeah, so, I do. So I don't know if you guys know, me and DJ with the high school, the guys. That's it, straight from the BIC. We survived, K, we, we survived Kennedy High School, old case five. forever, man. <laughs> Um, but you know our background, man. Kids yeah. from the Bronx, man. Like yeah. we didn't wear ties, man. Like no. our uniform was all coming to school with the same pair of jokes. Why did we all have the all white and red Barclays at the same time? <laughs> I don't understand. But but it's like if I knew then what I know now, I could have prepped myself better. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, I didn't even own a tie in high school. I didn't own a suit in high school. The first one I had was graduation. <laughs> exactly. Was just the, tie, the, first, the first suit I got um, was maybe freshman, sophomore year when I was going on job internship. Yeah. Interviews. But it was a gray pinstripe suit. That was my first suit. And, <laughs> and I, still, I still have it as a reminder, like, yo, I've come a long way. Yeah. You know, so um, teaching them the same way, like, yeah, you know, being in a suit shouldn't be you thinking, oh, you're not too good for it. But also you can carry yourself in a certain way that makes you self-respectable. Uh, amongst others and even amongst your peers, man. Like back in high school, you know, if someone showed up in a suit, they would get clowns. But, but now, but now I look back at them like, wow, like, nah, man. I should be like, yo, this person is like doing what they need to do. Like we shouldn't know how because they're wearing a suit. We should be like, yo, I, I need a suit, man. Like I, I want to wear a suit. I want to dress up, you know. So, but it, but it's, it's more than just the dressing up. Is is what what it symbolizes? It symbolizes power. It symbolizes respect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, unfortunately, we are a society that kind of judges until they hear you, until they understand your personality, they kind of judge you based on how you look from court. You know, so, you know, there's been times where I'll go outside in a Nike Fit Tech suit and people don't know that I work for a Fortune 500 company and I have my own business and I do this. They just yeah. see this black dude. Yeah, out there. Come and, out. You know, so it's, it's just like, it's it's, it sucks, yeah. but, um, Hopefully, with with what we're doing with the brand and what I'm doing personally, we can help to dispel some of that. Okay. So you guys uh, still doing the scholarships for the kids? Yep, we're still doing the scholarship for the kids. So uh, that's the third pillar, which is community. So uh, a portion of every sale goes to the creation of a scholarship, and our next steps hopefully is to start a nonprofit. Uh, we already have the name for it, and with the goal of doing more event, doing more events, doing more seminars doing backpack drives, but also we want to do a nonprofit so that other companies can help support mm-hmm. financially. Because um, we all know the business of nonprofit, if you, know, you guys donate, you guys will get a, you know, you can write it off your taxes. Right, right. right now, I can't say, hey, donate, donate money to our scholarship fund, you won't get the tax write off because we have a nonprofit yet, yeah. you know? So, yeah. but you know, not, last year we gave two student scholarships, so we did an application process, um, which was looked like a Google form, and, and they filled out short questions. Uh, short answers, and we had uh, uh, I think we had like forty applicants. That's not bad. And we, and we had uh, me, Terrence, and another person. I, I, her name escapes me. We, we uh, split up all the applicants, and we picked out who we thought was great based on the holistic body of work. And we we chose two. One lives in Maryland, and one lives in Florida. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's it's great that uh, people see it and they promote and you guys. That, you know, Message, out yeah, and I, the you know, or Oregon states that you guys are, yeah, and, and it, it means a lot to me because now I'm at a point where I can do this, you yeah. know, like it, it went from I'm trying to get scholarships to now I'm at a point where I can do something, you know, <laughs> even if it's a book scholarship, like books are expensive, you yeah, know, so yeah. but the, 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 the overall goal is to, since to not do uh, a five hundred or thousand dollar one time scholarship, like our goal is to do something where they can get five hundred to a thousand dollars per semester. Mm-hmm. Because what happens is sometimes with colleges, you'll get all this bulk money up front, which is great for your first year. But then, if it does continue, then you might not Gosh. have the money for second year. Start to year, you know. Yeah. So, if yeah. we can keep that consistency of doing maybe a four-year scholarship where it's five hundred each semester, yeah. you know, that can help them get towards their goals a little more right. and alleviate some some of that stress from their parents. Yeah, you know? something they don't have to think about yeah. in the second, third. Yeah, so if, if it's a book scholarship every, every semester, they know that my books are covered. Yeah, that's know? dope, bro. That's dope. I really appreciate the work you guys are doing. Like someday my kid's going to make that, hopefully make that decision to go to college. I'll never force anything on him. Right. The fact that there's programs out there looking for it, always been, but the fact that you guys made sure you're doing the same to try and help back Anybody who need any help with those books, you know how it was when we were going to college. I was like, you know, getting used to books because mm-hmm. I couldn't buy the brand new one. You know, mm-hmm. then I get the used book 
and then come with the discs for the CD <laughs> for my, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, but at the end of the day, I appreciate that you guys are doing that. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, and, and uh, with the nonprofit, we want, to, we want to do more things. We want to do things more so on professional development, you know, because one of the things that I also focus on is resonance. Mm-hmm. So uh, in college, I uh, I went to career services and did my resume and said, here you go. Here's the here's the basis of writing a resume. And I, I didn't redo my resume until like 2010, mm-hmm. and I didn't know how to do it. So I I learned how to do it, and I'm thinking, I wonder who else needs to, to know and understand this. So I got more into how to do resumes for different industries. Industries, you know, exactly. So now people sometimes come to me and say, hey, well, can you look over my resume and give me feedback? Um, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, it's in, sometimes I monetize it, but oftentimes I'm like, no, I'm just doing it for the culture. Uh-huh. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like, I'll, I'll give you some detailed feedback on how you can make it better. Some t- uh, a couple times I've taught seminars on, on how to adjust your resume. I've written articles about it. I feel like that's that's a lost art. Mm-hmm. You know, oftentimes I see someone that's been in their industry for 25 years, and they want me to look over their resume, and their resume is not what I would expect for someone that's worked in the industry for 25 years. Mm-hmm. So, um, and now it's so easy to really do a resume. Like I can do a resume on my phone. Like there's an apps, there's apps mm-hmm. to like do resumes on your phone. So it's like it's so easy to do it now, but other people don't have the time, or they don't really realize the, the nuances on. The, the small things to make a resume really pop, you know? Yeah. So that's something, that's something else we want to add to that in professional development because college is the only first step. It's true. It's true for not a lot of people hope. They don't want to open it up. You got more good? Um, bow tie. You got the bow tie. I always wanted to ask this question. Do you think bow tie is a professional? Can you wear it to the workplace? Cool, that's a great question. Um, I think it depends on the industry. Um, I work in consulting and most of my clients are finance. Or financial services companies, and I think you can. I think it has to be, but it has to be patterned. Do you think that's an error thing? That's <laughs> Do you think that's changed because of the era that we're in now? Yes. It wasn't always like that. Yeah. So now, now I feel like more of those stiff blue collared, um, sorry, white collared uh, industries where it was just like. White shirt, blue, blue suit, blue suit, brown shoes. Mm. They're a little more receptive to having those conversation pieces. And that, like, you know, I wear my beret all the time. So I remember back when I was at Morgan Stanley, I would wear a floral tie to work. People were like, oh, that's, that's, that's a nice tie. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, if I go to networking events and they see me, they might, may, not, may not know my name. They're like, he's the one that always wears like, tie. something that's nice. right, right. you know? square. So I feel like with bow ties, I feel like if you wear a, you, you shouldn't go to work with a solid black bow tie. Like, I feel like, like that's, like, I feel like that's a little too formal. formal. Yeah. yeah. So if you do with colors and patterns, you know that's all you really need to, to set your outfit on. Uh-huh. You know, so maybe like a nice pocket square or something. I love bow ties. She yeah. tried to get me to wear a bow tie. That's something that I didn't think was bow tie, but bow ties are good though. I don't uh, know. I just I love my bow ties. Yeah, you have a whole. Slew of them. <laughs> I'm learning a whole slew of different. But see, I don't feel like I get the chance to dress up like I used to. Like the opportunities were so much more when I feel like I was in my twenties than now. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Like people not getting as married as much, or I don't know. I don't, I don't get yeah. that opportunity. And, and and that's something that we struggle with uh, as a brand because now more than ever, <clears throat> uh, even in the workplace, people are wearing less accessories. They're, you know, they they're coming. It's it's more. Business casual and business professional. Right. Yeah. So right. they're wearing maybe a pocket square, but no tie. So that and so we changed our model where you know it used to be a tie month. So in one year, if you subscribe for a year, you get twelve ties. Mm-hmm. We're trying to change our model so that maybe you get nine this year. You know, okay. and and supplement it for something else. You know, so instead of a tie and a square, you get socks or something. Mm-hmm. Like that, you know, so um, because we realize that like even when sometimes when I go into my my office on Fridays, people are in suits, but there's no tie. Mm, you yeah. know, everyone is dressed in yeah. Um, so with with everything going on, and you have your own personal personal um, job that you also do. How does how do you balance everything? And you're always traveling, so yeah. you know where do you find your own peace in the source so that you can go ahead and you know keep continuing what you do. Um, so so this year has been tough. So uh, in August, I joined a firm, KPMG. Um, it's uh, a audit and tax firm, but they also have an advisory practice. So I work in an advisory practice, which is like consulting. So I'm in their program management solution 
So right now they have me staffed in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. So that means that every week, every Monday I fly out, every Thursday I come back, I have uh, work from home Friday, and then I have a weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's said to be a little bit difficult because trying to fit your life in two days, because your life is there now, trying to fit everything in two days where seeing my girlfriend, ha having fun with my friends, seeing my family, mm -hmm. trying to do something with the business. But time management has like really helped me out to the point where I utilize my planner, I utilize my phone's calendar app um, to try to really manage my time so that I'm not wasting, you know, any minute, you mm -hmm. know. So it's, it's, and my friends and my family, they're receptive to it. Like, they realize that I'm only here for two days. So, you know, even if it's, even if it's just having dinner with my girlfriend or just, or just talking on the phone with my parents, like, they, they're appreciative of the fact that I'm trying to carve out time to, to do everything I need to do before I fly back out my Cool. I'll keep this a real stiff interview and let you keep going. And it's not stiff, I'm just saying it was great. But I'm gonna ask you, Luca Donchi. Come on, baby! <laughs> You're a mass fan, man. I know, so I You're a like, mass fan. I just so so, so, so to give you guys some context, I've been a Mavericks fan since 99. Yeah, way and, before. I, and, I, I, I can attest to it. In high school, DJ was amongst all the folks that were clowning me in, in high school for being a mass fan. And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay because because nobody was a Mavs fan. We, we we kept losing to to the Spurs. You guys, we, we had Nash and Finley and Dirk, and then the, the defining moment was in 2011 when we beat the Heat. That's, that's like, it. Was it. Everybody named Mom called me. Called, that's it. it. Everybody asked what I knew, man. That's it. But yeah, Luke, Luca Luca's a, a problem, man. Yeah, he's he's a a, he's, a, he's a man child, man. Yeah. And, um, it, it's great that between him and Trey Young, they're both like solid, solid rookies. Um, you think they're the only two that really has solid years? I know there's a couple. Uh, Aiton's had, Aiton, had a good year, but the problem, the problem with Aiton is he's on a team that doesn't get as much shine. Yeah, like, like, unless you have league pass, you're not gonna go on, the 18th, uh, on TNT and see a Suns game. Right. You're not. Yeah, like, yeah. they're showing more Mavs games now. Occasionally mm -hmm. they'll show a Hawks game. But, you know, that's the problem with some of these teams. Like, they're so small market that yeah. they don't get that burn unless you have NBA league pass. But, yeah, man, I'm excited for Luka. I'm excited for um, when Porzingis finally comes back. And, you guys stole um, somebody right from no, but we'll New see. York. But, but, but we'll see. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll see, man. Like, it's, 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 uh, we don't know if it's damaged goods. That's mm, true, too. That's, you know? that's what I'm, I hope it's mm. not for you guys because I like KP. I yeah, do. like, the moment it happened, like, I kind of felt like I kind of had a few text messages like, "Yo, congrats!" I'm like, yeah. "Congrats on what?" And then ESPN flashed on my phone. I'm just like, I, I was excited. It was me when that happened. I, I was at the airport. I was at the airport when it happened. I think I we think was somewhere out of town. It was on a Thursday. Okay, yeah. yeah I Thursday. think it was. Yeah, I don't think I think it was. We was on that. No, we was in Dominican Republic. I oh yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, man. So you know, this year's a wash, but I'm excited to see who we pick up in the draft. Those years that are wash, when you have like prodigies like 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 um, Donjic, like. Those are the great years because you're gonna continue to pile up on talent in the draft. You got a star to depend on. You got KP who could possibly still be a great star. You guys got a lot to look forward to. Yeah, and, and we have and a great we, we, we have a great mentor in, in, in Dirk. But think about the Knicks, right? You think he's done this year? I'm sorry before you get it. Uh, probably next year. Next year, okay. I think next year. I think he'll do one more year All right. as like a mentor role. Yeah, to to Luca and KP. All right. Um, the thing about the Knicks is I feel like they're putting all their eggs in one basket. All the time. Well, no, no. But this is a year where like, they have a lot of cap room. Yeah. So like, I don't think they've had this them. much cap room in, uh, in, in they, recent years. Yeah. So they're really trying to swing for the fences. And they're trying to get you know, KD. They're trying to Kyrie. Right. Kyrie. You know, they're thinking that they might get Zion. And I think they might. Because the NBA, NBA, might, NBA okay. might rig it like they did for Patrick Ewing. You yeah. know? So, Last week, I was like, yo. If we get Zion, his yeah. career is over. <laughs> it's over. I was like, yo, he gotta play them four years and just don't sign that that first contract. He gotta get out of the dodge, yo. Like, no, but, but but I firmly believe the thing about the Knicks is it's a it starts from the top top down. Yeah, it's, 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 it starts from the owners, the GMs, and finally the coach. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you guys have had a really good coach since Tony Wilkins. That's kind of wild. You think you, know, um, you don't think Fizz is? No. Nah, right. I, I like them. Like, I think everybody thinks about his moment in Memphis. 
that um when, when he had when take he that lost that, yeah, yeah, take that for data moment. Right? I think uh, if you guys can uh, get like a Mark Jackson, I, I would love or, that or or Jason Kidd. I think those type of guys are scared to come coach for this type of management. Really? I think so. I think that those type of guys will always stay away from, like, you're always going to get, like, a, a secondary, like, a fizz deal, like a, like a, you know what I'm saying, like, a smaller name than the bigger, like, we're not going to get, um, you know, Rick Carlisle coming in. We're not going to get, even Phil Jackson sat up in the rafters. He didn't even want to come down. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we're not going to get like that. We're going to have to get a coach and, and grow and into something and without the management. We, I don't think we'll get but we'll see, man. Like, it pained me. Like, you know, like, even when we were in school, like, the Knicks were okay, but they weren't like. I think know. since I've gotten out of college, the Carmelo year with um, so yeah, that that one year we was a two seed, and that was the only good year since. Um, Brooklyn is looking good though. Yeah. Um, yeah. They got a Lakers, lot of pieces. Lakers took the took a big. That was a big mistake that they traded uh, DeAndre Russell. Yeah, I think they should have just gave him one more year, let go, and then not even take on um, this guy. Yeah, yeah, I think. Lonzo. Yeah, ah, that's the thing, right? So, I think they should have kept both of them. They could have, right. they could have built a good, sol- a solid. Uh, they one gave two. away D'Angelo for what again? What it was? It was like, I forgot. It was it Lopez? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, but he had a lot of issues on the team. With the social media thing yeah, and all he, that, yeah, so yeah. that kind of created a bad aura with the organization. He's so, young, man. Huh? Yeah, when we think about it, he's like twenty. Okay, last sports question before I get back to you. Um, I wanted to talk about Rob Gronkowski, and I don't know why it popped up in my head. And it's the type of, I guess, player he is off the field. And I wanted to get your, you know, feedback on it. Me and her was having a conversation <laughs> after he retired, and I was like, he's gonna be one of the most celebrated tight ends. Like Tony Gonzalez didn't go out like this. Do you think there's a specific reason why, as far as being a white tight end and probably like black or minority tight end? Do you think they held him to a certain stature because of that? No. No? Not at all? They held him like, to a certain stature because he's efficient. You think so? Yeah. We, we, even with the injuries and stuff. Because you got guys he was, like... He, he was still efficient and he was a threat. He was because, because not threat. only was his like catching ability great, he can block. I'm, I guess I'm talking more about the off the field, like the things that people enjoy with him. To me, get on my nerves. I don't. I don't know. Well, I, th- I think it's because he doesn't like when you hear about him partying. You don't hear like I haven't heard like you know him getting. She drunk. said the same thing. Like, I haven't heard like, him getting thing. drunk with, with a DUI. Like mm. you don't hear those things. Like for example, Manziel. Like, Manziel parties probably just as much as Grant, but. You always get in trouble with the law. Right. Like you don't hear Grunt getting in trouble with the law. You hear like he's like a, a Jersey boy just just having fun, mm-hmm. you know. And and it's okay to have fun. Like you you you've busted your your butt for years to get to this point. You are now at the upper echelon as one of the greatest athletes in the world. Like have some fun. Yeah. But he he realizes okay I'm gonna have fun, but I'm gonna suit up every Sunday. That's true. You know I'm injured yeah, but I'm gonna be on the sun on my team every Sunday. See when I watch ESPN. And you know they keep replaying and replaying. I'm just like certain things get on my nerves. But, maybe it might have been just watching it over and over. But that's why I needed I somebody think, else to bring me back. He's going to the WWE. You think he's going to do it? I think he's going. He's to, I'm, I'm a diehard wrestling fan. You know, I, I know that. So. Yeah, I, th- I think he's going to go to WWE. That'd be dope. Yeah. That'd be dope. He's will be a great personality for that. Yeah, yeah that'd be definitely, definitely good for him. So, um, so what's next? What you got going on? What um, G and Cole got going on next? Um, Any events? Any? Pop up shops, anything like that coming up? Uh, we're we're trying to figure out our summer schedule now. Okay, we're trying to figure out what pop ups we can do because you know we have a lot of in- inventory, a lot of new things coming out. You know, our April box comes out soon. It's uh, we got we got a floral pocket square, we got a navy tie. Um, we got some good things in that one. The the theme of that one is travel. Okay, so we're gonna have a a, um, a passport a passport cover. Nice. You know, so certain nice. Things yeah, yeah, yeah. That, again, certain things that you may not need, but you know, it's just nice. to swipe out your passport. No, definitely, you know. So you see it more and more being. Yeah. Right so, now. so we're trying to figure out that. We're trying to figure out a summer outlook, and you know, we're trying to rebrand. You know, how we package. You know, the box size and color. Mm-hmm. And thing may change. How we package our items. How we promote our items. Trying to really get a handle on um, digital marketing and make social media work for us to the point where we're not. Spending all this money and not getting anything in mm-hmm. return yeah. because that was a misconception. Like, oh, if I find, put a six hundred dollar ad, then I should get hit. But then I realized that we did totally wrong, and that right. six hundred was for nothing. You know, right. so 
So yeah, so I, I'm excited about the future. Um, you know, this is that waiting period where you know some businesses, the first two, three, four years are, are, are a struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's that struggle of you know locally, but trying to extend outside the sphere of influence. Right. Like, like yes, yeah, it's great that my followers know followers, but I want people that don't even know who the hell we are and to stumble upon us on the Google image search. Right. And it says, okay, I've tried this, let me try this. You know, and I want to be able for us to really sh stress our why. Become a firm believer of what's your why. Yeah. And, um, you know, Apple does a great job at that. They don't just say, here's a new iPhone. It's, you know, we want to continue to be the innovators and, and this, that, and third. We want to continue to do this. We want to continue to bring you the best camera possible. Now introducing the iPhone, whatever number they are. Yeah. Like, they do a good job at that. And, you know, if we continue to embrace our why, then, you know, everything will, will fall into play. And it's crazy because I was talking to some of my frat brothers. Blue Fire to everyone out there, man. <laughs> you know, uh, member of Five Eight Six Fraternity Incorporated. Um, and I told them, like, yeah, we do scholarships. And they was like, I didn't know that. And I was like, you know, so trying to find more ways to make sure that all three pillars are out there mm -hmm. that people can understand that. I guess, you know, we're trying to have funds to keep the business going, but we want to have funds to give to the next generation. Right. Yeah. Well. That's a, I'm sorry. Like, it's like you to give back. You know, it's hard, especially when you have a, your own like, company going on and you're trying to show more and also get back more. And you know, especially with the youth going on, and you know, you want to reach for the youth because that's where it starts at first. When it comes to the youth in particular, how do you encourage them to keep going on? Especially nowadays, when it comes to like your apparel and stuff like that, they're more like in the trends of the streets and stuff like that. But they also need to know along the way in the structure of life, you do have to have that type of suit and tie because that's what represents you in exactly what you said with the resumes. You know, you're selling yourself. How do you encourage the kids to keep on focus on that also instead of getting caught up in all the trends that are what, you know, what the bling bling and all that other stuff that doesn't get you no bling, bling. Yeah, wow. yeah, I, I don't know how to, I should say it that way because you know, you see, you're like, oh my God, I love that sweater, but then they find the price. You can't afford that. Like, right. you know, you gotta so be with the it's, it's what they see is what they'll be. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, I, I, I help, I, I'm a co-chair for this mentoring program. And every Saturday we're there in suits. And every Saturday, like, yeah, we have fun. Like, it's me and two others. Shout out to Phil Britton and Jean Dude Atelier. Um, and I'm, I'm the youngest one. And so I'm trying to connect with the kids more. So I'll come in there and talk about basketball and mm -hmm. we have our little debates. But they still see me. Once that's over and the class has started, I have their attention. Right. And they see, you know, sometimes I have someone check out my social media and see, like, hey, I have a lot of things going on. Like, and to show them that, you know, the, it's like back in the day, like I didn't, I couldn't picture my mom having fun. I couldn't picture my mom doing this. It was like, oh, she's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and just like I couldn't picture my teachers doing all that. But now I have friends that are moms. I have friends that are teachers and they're having <laughs> just as much fun. So it's like, to show them like there is a side, but you still have to respect us and, and things of that nature. And just keep encouraging them. I think, um, encourage them that they can do whatever they want once they've been in the belief that they can't, mm -hmm. um, goes far. You know, like I, and Kennedy, I had a teacher tell me I wasn't going to college. Mr. Gallo, he told me, I don't think you're going to college, man. Uh -huh. You know, I'm not going to write your recommendation. You went to one of the best yeah. universities in the world. I saw, <laughs> I saw You know, so it's, it's like, the, like, you know, and teaching them to use that, those naysayers as motivation. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, I, I went to college for myself, but I, I went to college because one, you know, you know, they, I, they provided me for me to do so, mm -hmm. but I knew that there'll be a time where I see Mr. Gallo again. And I'll say, hey, in 2005, you told me that I was going to go to college. Now, so yo, let everybody know where to find you, how to get your information, everything, um, Instagram, the website, and everything. Sure, so my personal Instagram is Poetic Sigma, uh, it's P O E T I C S I G M A. Um, I am a spoken word poet. Um, I haven't you know, written in a while, but I still do perform. Um, so if you need a poet for an event, please reach out. The, the brand's name is Gene Co Apparel, and you can follow us on Instagram at Gene Co Apparel, G-A-N-D-C-O-A-P-P-A-R-E-L. Um, www.genecoapparel.com. This goes to show how busy this man is, because I remember a point where writing 
was something that you really focused on. Yeah. And the fact that you were doing so much and had to kind of put that in the back seat for a minute. How um you looking to get into it, back into it soon, anytime soon? Yeah, you know, I'm um again I, I have a bunch of unwritten po- unfinished poems in my notes section. Okay. Um, you know, again, if people ask me to perform for an event, I do. I usually do the same two, three poems, so I'm trying to find um, motivation to write again mm-hmm. um, and write performance level work. I know? think because I I, I, lo- I love the I love writing, but I love being on stage. Mm-hmm. I love you know I get energized when I'm performing. And I hear when I hear snapping and when I hear people go yep, that's right. Yeah, and it's like all right, so it shows that you know at any given moment someone needs to hear your piece, and that could be the thing that sets them apart. They'd be having a really bad day. And they hear your piece, and it's like that's what I need. Yeah. Or they could have a, a mood swing, and they can hear that poem and say, you know what, that's what I need. That day. Yeah. You know? So that's one thing I love about performing. I will get back to it. I will start writing again. It's just I want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing it 100. Right. right. I don't want to. I don't want to half-ass it. You feel like it's like a seasonal thing, like because I know I get motivated, it, motivated in certain seasons. Like something might hit me now, and it might be a whole year where some just don't hit. Me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't think it's a seasonal thing. It's just me just. You know, focusing on it. You know, okay. like, you know, with all that I'm doing when I'm sitting on the train, you know, most people, you know, that could be an opportunity to write. You know, I came here from Brooklyn on the train, so mm-hmm. that was an opportunity to write. And I was like, now, you know what? I'm gonna listen to some of the both sides podcasts. Right. You know, I'm gonna try to understand y'all chemistry, and yeah. you know, that's why I asked you guys like, how you guys started because it's such a dope <laughs> podcast. You guys have a really good chemistry, you, thank you. and I do right. things like that. So I listen to podcasts in my spare time. I, 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 you know, watch Netflix, and I try to find ways to like unwind from 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 everything because especially when I'm in Charlotte like I'm, I'm working 10 11 hour days mm-hmm. four days a week you know like Friday it's a normal eight hour day oh, wow. you know but but one thing I, and but I'm around people okay and I'm around good people and I love that uh, like my team down there they're, they're an amazing bunch of folks and that's what separates things like you know we are not professional we all have work work will always be the work but if you're working with really good people it always makes it work it does man like, yeah. like we would sit in the office till i'm in mean, 12 o'clock and i'm like you know what i wouldn't do this with any other, any other people. right you know so yeah thank you i really want to appreciate you i have no problem so, man and, do, and um, just and, want to say this i know this brother almost 20 years now it's hey, crazy man <laughs> i don't want to put uh, that out there. It'll make us sound older than we actually are. We're not old. We're 20, in the prime. Oh, what, right? right? Probably old oh, one now. Almost 20 years. Um, <laughs> this dude has been a good dude since the day I met him. Always, always been uh, helpful. Always reaching out. Always been in touch with me throughout the years. Been there when I was up. Been there when I was down. Been there back when I'm up. So this is a cool, genuine brother. I really appreciate it, bro. I appreciate you, I'm man. Really definitely appreciate you, man. This is for you, you, man. I think I definitely want you. you to have this. I appreciate I that. Y'all guys see that? I'll put that all up in the camera. <laughs> oh, got that, all right? Because it's going to be a nice um, summer for me. I got a bunch of weddings to go to, so right. I might definitely have to look in here. Yeah, it yeah. might save me some bread, too. I got me. you, man. You know, size $20, man. Nah, you know, I'm I'm size I definitely need cheap, to man. stack up on We got those bow ties if you need them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I do, do need some bow ties, stuff. Man. Yeah, my grandmother ain't sent me something in a while. <laughs> so we got Will Dennis. Thank you, bro, again for coming through. This is the Both Sides with DJ and Honey Podcast. That's right. We'll be back, right? Yes. <laughs> It is dope, man. Yeah, thank you. That's man. really cool. Yeah. That's really recommend. Nah, for real. Really cool. It's it's definitely good to see, bro. I mean, you've always been doing stuff like this, though, since since back in the day, bro. Like, you've yeah. always been a part of the community. You've always been a part of the community. Bro. I I get it from my mom, man. Yeah. Like, my mom, she, she does so much for the community now, man. Like, she, uh... She, she's still up here in the Bronx? Yeah, she's still up in the Bronx. I'm actually going to go see her after this. I'm about to say, you know, um, we can't show up in the Bronx yeah, and yeah, not make that stop. It's a sacrilege, man. But, yeah. Like she does so much for the community, health fairs and different um, things, and um, I know I know that. That's where I get it from. Like yeah. she 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 does, she loves doing it. How's it, bro? You know, she, both of them are good, yeah. man. Like like Kevin, he's a junior in college. He, um, he's crushing these. I, I saw that. I saw that. He went to a couple of games. Yeah, I went to his championship game. He's out here crushing it, man. And and he reminds me of Zion. He's six four. Yeah. He's six four, stocky, but he leads D three uh, or like top five of D three in rebounds. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm hoping that you know he he can use that. Um, but one thing I do appreciate uh, appreciate about him is he 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 realizes that you know the top one percent get into the NBA. Yeah. So 
Yo, yeah, it'd be nice if he does get drafted, but he's not banging on it. So right. he's majoring in criminal he's justice. Right. Okay. Like he wants to be a cop. That's, that's Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Both Sides Podcast with DJ and Honey. There you go. Got it. Of course I'll let I you got have it. your name. <laughs> I'll let you have your name. Woo-hoo. That was dope. Well, <laughs> thank you, bro. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for all the gifts and everything dropping off. That's right. Definitely going to use those nice items, nice tie socks and all those nice things. Yeah, I think that's great, though. Everybody needs some type of room. Why not have a way I could really see if they get some good tea? Yeah, all of that's You know, and you don't have to worry about certain particular things, but which are certain people that are a little, you know, it becomes nerve-wracking, especially with that right color, the right size. I feel like with G and Core Apparel, it's very much interactive with their customers and subscribers, I should say. Right. Um, And that's cool, too. Um, Shout out to the April box that they got out going right now, the... um, Airplane pins and everything, all those I things. I love the and things. Those little pins. That yeah, is those really things cool. Are dope. So, things passport are nice. um, cover. Make sure you guys check that out. Right. Um, right. Check out Will Dennis' um, page at Poetic Sigma, right? Poetic, Poetic Sigma. Sigma. And at G and Co Apparel on Instagram. You guys make sure you subscribe. So, what are we doing this weekend, babes? What are we doing? Final Four? Well, yeah, we're watching the Final Four, but we're also like. We do have to mention it is the month of April. Shout out to my boy Claudio. Happy birthday, bro. That's right. Shout yeah. out. We had a couple birthdays coming up. Baby. Shout out to him, yo. Or was it? What? Solo Shout out to Solo Savage. That's it's my right. birthday. That's my, one of my best, best friends, yo. Shout out to him. He sang a very nice happy birthday. He did. That was that. really, really nice. So happy birthday yeah, to him. Yeah, so. that's what's up. Yeah, I like that. Shout out to, um again, all the women for Women's Month. Um, I did want to say I was kind of glad to get some testosterone in here on the both sides set. That was a lot of, you know, but I'm glad and very, very grateful for our women's guys. Yeah. You know, it's independence, you know, there's a lot of women doing a lot of hats and the, the, the hustle, the bustle and the whole, you know, bounce of life thing. You know, it's, it's showing. Is that men's month? It should. I think it is. I gotta look that up. That's sad. That's sad. I don't yeah, know. let me know. You guys gotta be on the camera with that. I guess I'm like, it's only to the June. Yeah, so I think you gotta things. get June. Yeah, we got a lot of things planned for you guys this um, rest of the season. Never like to, like, never want to talk about it and um, put it out there and then it doesn't happen. But we like to. Keep you guys excited because we're always working on some things behind the scenes. Um, yeah. Something I wanted to ask, and I don't know why this hit me, and I sorry to go out on this. Spandex. Is it spandex season, right? Yeah? Or no? Spandex season is every year. Oh, yeah, okay. Why? When did that become the dominant pants for the female? I gotta ask, my, I gotta ask you. To be that, honest, some, no. Because when I, when I some met you, just and so, yeah. Well, do you, you got a lot of spandex? I'm not, t- I'm not saying I don't Okay, I'm going to tell, tell you why. Right, you know, I'm going to tell you why. In my... Going to work every day and you have to get dressed up. And I don't mind it because I used to wear a lot of jeans too. But then it's like, you know, you're not really... If you're not either going out, out, or you're not... You don't have to wear so, such clothes and you just go and do certain things. It's like, it's cool. You know, you can dress up like this, but you don't have to wear it all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, Maybe. I don't like... I don't, there's, there's it's convenient from mm, in a way, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you know, depending mm-hmm. on the quality, because some of these women are not buying those things. They're really I think buying I just tight. I honestly want to have like a. I'm gonna save that topic for one day. What work life, life versus? No, just the, the the impact on what it has become all over again. Because there was a time nobody was really wearing those things like that. I, I don't know, this is that's totally off. I think because now the time, like I think it's because now the season is, you know, now you're going to see more girls in leggings. Now, certain, because certain, I, I shouldn't say this, but where in Brooklyn, I used to, it's a norm. Like, you just see them in people who live in my, in my old neighborhood. We just wore leggings, get up and just do our thing. You just put stuff. Well, but nowadays, you know, cobble. Yeah, hell. but it's nowadays, okay. girls just wear, just wear. And some of those things are not true to what they are. You know, and plus it's that's the season. A, that, now that's, that's the men are gonna start looking, and 
It's that season and now you're gonna see more girls wear it because it just shows me. That's the conversation I really wanna have. Mm -hmm. like, that's the thing that so I have to say have. it. Yeah, that's, that's not that fun. Well, let's get into it real quick <laughs> since we brought it up. No, so since he was dancing spandex, around it. Is spandex a tool? It is a tool. Oh. It's a conversation that you want to have, so it's a tool. Oh, mm. a tool for what? For men to look and that's ask these is. questions. That's what it is. I asked my woman, who else should I ask? Act. Spandex right now is going to be in the rise. It's like summertime, springtime. Certain people wear, my thing is, if you're going to wear spandex. questions I've had since like 2010, I've just never asked. I've been holding them within and I've chose to ask you, you know? I don't know, some, I just think that if you're going to wear them, wear them for what they are. They have different versions of tights or leggings or the quality. If you're going to wear some, wear it in taste. Don't wear it because, you know, if you're trying to attract them, wear the things that you want to attract somebody in. It depends, it depends. My thing of using wearing leggings, and I don't wear them all the time, but I do wear them when I can, and it's most of the time, like especially on the weekends, is because of the fact I just don't like wearing regular clothes all the time. I'm playing well, I understand you. I and then it's like, I see, I see you know, I wear certain, like I wouldn't wear my workout gear outside as opposed to wearing regular leggings. I think people tend to, just like regular clothes, you don't wear certain things for certain occasions. That's my thing. But leggings hide a lot of things too. Yeah, that's why I said it's a tool. 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 I don't know what it seems for. Uh, we'll still say that conversation for me. Yeah, we should. That, 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 with that one day. I want to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, what are we doing this weekend? Uh, wearing spandex? Yeah, we're wearing spandex. You wearing spandex because it's the weekend. I will be watching the final four. Um, great um, shout out again to Will. Um, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming through to both sides love, studio. You know the teachers. Yeah, you guys really need to check out the power. The woman's power is really good. Really, really nice. Um, we're gonna be heading out, yeah. right? Yeah. This is both sides with DJ and Honey. Dang, I did it wrong. I gotta do it again. Okay, we gonna be heading out, baby. Yes. Okay. This is both sides with DJ and Honey podcast. We see y'all and talk to y'all next weekend. Stay blessed. Hey you guys, we would like to give thanks to the various artists who contribute to all our episodes. This, this is how it looks like this. Ah, sorry I couldn't hear our conversation just now. That was a little secret thing. If I did, so what? <laughs> Honey cat is better. The cat is better. Oh, well, he moving. Yeah. He's better. Honey ain't coughing no more. Um, Snow later. First and foremost, and lastly, real quick, just shout out to Honey for just always, always, always being my ride or die. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for building this beautiful, beautiful both sides studio with me. Thank and thank y'all.